And we're back with the breakfast and plus TV Africa. Openabon Katarier is on standby. He joins us this morning as we look at the front pages of the national dailies. Uh, we call it off the press. Open the ball. It's good to have you join us. Good morning. Good morning, Messi, and good morning, Nigerians. Well, let's quickly take a look at the Nation newspaper and uh, find out what's making it this morning on the Nation. 2023 G5 governors allies to sustain anti atiku moves. Aggrieved PDP governors chief Tain meets in Lagos. Wike Makinde or Tom Ikpeazu insist on IU sack. These are the riders you have underneath the bold caption on the Nation newspaper. And uh, you also find interest rate hike likely as CBN reviews indicators. You also have all the quarters who are asking for the resignation of, um, you know, the CBN governor. And what of you? While we are backing Obi by Ohanese, he symbolizes hope. AKT Assembly boils Oyetala wins World Bank Award on expenditure efficiency. Cleric abducted in Quara. Well, uh, that's it. We just uh, turn our attention to the Daily Sun newspaper. The Daily Sun reports almost well, quite differently from the nation. Excitement as World Cup begins in Qatar. Of course, uh, that match was witnessed yesterday uh, between Qatar and, uh, you know, Unfortunately, a 4-0 four, a four right there. Ecuador, Qatar and Ecuador, uh, the game opening. But uh, we, we move away from that. Military gets ordered to tame terrorists before elections. We have been directed to stop criminals and gunmen from disrupting uh, polls. That's what uh, the soldiers are quoted to say. Military gets ordered to tame terrorists before elections. We have been directed to stop criminals and gunmen from disrupting polls. Again, hope increases for production as Buhari flags of oil exploration in Bauchi and Gombe. Does this solve the problem? Is you know question that's begging for answer. Fighter jet kills cause of terrorists in Kaduna. CP orders manhunt for killers of three corps on stop and search duty. Insecurity, unemployment will determine how rural Nigerians will vote. That's according to a survey. APC, PDP maintain problem of Nigeria says, I like to take that again. APC, PDP main problem of Nigeria says, Kwan Kwaso. And PDP crisis, WK allies meet in Lagos and form integrity group. It's a lot. So from the G5, so some uh, integrity group. I mean, is it really different from the G5 now and integrity group? They say we are still open for reconciliation. Lekki Ekpe Corridor may be washed away by 2024. NCF alerts. Protest as North gets lion's share in NAS new appointment. Crisis hit Adamawa APC. The stakeholders favor Rubadu for Guba polls or Guba ticket. These are some of the headlines. And just before we move away from that, why we endorse Peter Obi by Ohanese. Still dominating the pages. And the Daily Trust says Southeast gets lion's share of NEITI's controversial recruitment. Not East, not West gets lowest. CSOs demand accountability. Relative of board members among recruits, why we hired more staff. Uh, it's a lot to talk about. And Nigeria to end 33 trillion naira from not new oil field. NAF airstrike kills bandit, destroyed camps in Kaduna and Zamfara. And just before we move away from the Daily Trust newspaper, uh, there's also a, a pictorial representation as regards the share of the NEIT's uh, uh, recruitment, which some have tagged as controversial. Well, that's it.
On the Daily Trust, we quickly turn our attention to the punch. The punch says, NFIU flags 150 trillion naira transactions. EFCC tracks candidate spending. Suspicious transaction up by 22.91% amid rising political activities. EFCC intensifies surveillance on APC PDP orders. Uh, campaign funds. Bank gets fresh EFCC NFIU directives as 2023 polls draw closer. So um, we're still looking at the issue of corruption. But apparently, some people will say uh, vote buying. This might just be another means to cop vote buying. And on the punch, Senate or stalemate aggrieved PDP governors weigh fresh options. Nigeria Rick's food crisis in 2023 says IMF and uh, Ohanese endorses OB says it's our turn. Gunmen abduct Quara Cleric, son, and demands 100 million naira as ransom. And Mob lynches transport boss for killing young or your teenager. The mob lynches transport boss for killing or your teenager. Uh, the details quite there. How foreigners, middlemen capture Nigerian gas market. That's it on the punch. We uh, we just uh, turn our attention to open a in Kataria, who joins us this morning on off the press on the breakfast. Open it's good to have you join us. It's my pleasure once more, Messi, and uh, good morning, Nigeria. Uh, quickly, let's share your thoughts on the G5 governors and the fact that they've actually formed an, uh, you know, a group for, they call it the Integrity Group. And this is ahead of the 2023 elections, looking at the consents of, you know, this G5, this governors who've come together saying, uh, you can't have the president or presidential uh, flag bearer and also the chairman of a party coming from the same region. Absolute bunker, complete full flag, you know. Um, the truth is, the G5 government, led by Yesom Wike, are just disgruntled characters in the party who have resolved to. Um, and string the success of the party in the forthcoming 2023 general elections. And the, reasons, the reason is simple. The VK was vested at the last uh, convention. And IU is now more or less like, um, I'm trying to look for a word for it, like the scapegoat, so to speak, simply because it's uh, well, what is then again? The Sokoto State Governor, the hero of the day, the hero of the convention, for stepping down for a tip. And that's in Google. In Kotaria, there's a H after the A. In Kotaria, there's a H after the A. So that is just why VK is so incensed. You know, it's frenetic. And it will stop at nothing. The issue of removing a U. And over, you cannot just it's not a dictatorship. Probably he thinks that uh, River State, um, PDP is just like River State, where he wakes up in the morning, just like he's dealing with uh, order 22 and order 23, and will issue an order that must be obeyed. You know, he sees himself as a political deity that must be worshipped, that must be revered. The issue is simple for Nigerian revolutionists. No matter what you say, I mean. Two wrongs cannot make any right. No matter what you say, if you have to, if you must go, there are procedural obligations. You just have to follow those procedural obligations. A breach of it is equal is tantamount to what is going on, what you claim you are fighting right now. That would be just and unless you say you set aside the constitution of the people. Are you going to set aside the constitution of the PDP just because of five persons? Is the PDP made up of just those five persons? The IU you said to go is even one of the founding members of the PDP. You claim you have sustained the PDP. All you did was to repeat the kindness the PDP did. You were a local government chairman on the platform of PDP. 
You were a chief of staff on the platform of PDP. You were a minister on the platform of PDP. A governor on the platform of PDP. As I told you, a local government chairman, you did not, you did not contribute a cover to the PDP. PDP admitted you are maybe a local government chairman. Chief of staff, you have no contribution to the PDP. Minister, you have no contribution to the PDP. You only started maintaining the PDP as a governor and for some selfish reasons. Not that you are maintaining the party because you love the party. You are spending so much money just because of your presidential ambition. And today, you have somebody who himself was a member of the, one of the founding members of the party. That is you himself you are talking about. And you say you sustain the party. You are only recruiting. In fact, you have not given back to the party you have of what the party has given to you. You say, ah, you must go. Yes, okay, no problem. Ah, you must go. Even though I completely disagree with that. Now, what, why, why do I disagree with that? First and foremost, are you was elected before uh, uh, Atiku Abubakar? Are you emerged as a candidate of the, uh, as the chairman before Atiku Abubakar? You knew that you was there. Why did you still go ahead to vote for Atiku Abubakar? If they had voted for Atiku Abubakar before, you would have said, no, why will you bring the chairman or the presidential candidate? If you want a you to go, one, there are procedural applications, or two, after the election, you cannot come up with the fact of, oh, no, you cannot have the national chairman and the president from the same group. Don't forget, I'm not going to this, the same thing happened. You still have the national chairman and the president from the same group. So why is this a major problem? You are saying this. It's like a glass screen. You are saying, are you must go, knowing too well that it is almost impossible. So you come up with an impossible demand. You don't do well that it cannot be met. And you not have on that. So the issue of I you must go is a special reason. It's a subtitle. It is not a genuine reason. That is, the problem is not are you. If I you leave, there is going to be some constitutional crisis in the PDP. Because if I you leave, that the man who takes over from IU is going to come from that from that I use, uh, uh, zone, which is still going to be the law. What happened? You say a Southern must come. How would the Southern come? How? A convention must take place. Even if you talk about doctrine of necessity, is this the right time to talk about that doctrine of necessity? It's an opportune time to talk about doctrine of necessity. It's an opportune time to talk about doctrine of necessity. You can't talk about doctrine of necessity at this point in time. So it is rationally inexplicable. Rationally inexplicable as to say you must go. The truth is, I look at him, look at what he's doing. You know, he wanted, or he has been wanted, that without him, the PDP cannot win. Now, he has gone to Lagos to endorse the APC Lagos State Governor. Every day on telling whenever he has the opportunity, he takes an article to slate article. Every day. What is he doing? The marketing the party. And at the same time, you are saying, oh, you want, you already, you're open for a discussion, you're open for negotiation. Who is fooling who? His words are perversely across to his actions. You are saying something else, you are doing something else. Look at the damage you probably would have caused if you had that, that, that gravitas to cause the damage, if you have that weight to cause the damage. Look at the damage you are doing. You are coming and you are a thief. You say, you are a criminal, you are a thief. Oh, he should sue you. You say, oh, I think we went to which state to say uh, uh, all service chiefs have not come from one zone. You say, I think we should first of all implement that in, within the party. In other words, this crediting activity. So there's the market in the party. Just because of your selfish ambition, because this has nothing to do with equity, fairness, and justice. That argument of equity, fairness, and justice, of an essence of reason and force of logic, it is completely ridiculous in the form of equity. Talking of equity, fairness, and justice, you know, Peter himself, in 2014, he took over from a nation, where is equity, fairness, and justice? Okay. He took over from a nation. So what are we talking about? Every independence and justice. You can't appropriate and repropriate. I wonder what the PDP is doing. Why they have not expelled him from the party? No party in this world is indispensable. No human being. Not even your parents are indispensable. Not even your kids are indispensable. No human being is indispensable. The person is already expelled him from the party and let the heavens fall. He's already playing anti party. No amount of reconciliation will make him support Atiku. That is the truth about it. And there will be mutual suspicion between Wiki and Atiku. So what is the whole essence of reconciliation and reconciliation? It's all bunker. What they are saying is for him to be expelled from the party right now. And let the party move on. If he loses, he loses. If he wins, he wins. Because even if he reconciles today, I bet you, 
There cannot be any genuine work, commitment from Wilson Wiki and the integrity group. There cannot be. There cannot be. Okay. Because there is so much bias, so much bitterness, simply because he lost at the convention. Okay. That's all. So what are they talking about the constitution? The man is already doing anti party. That's what he's doing. Look at the river said he's going to be going to give the video like this. But but you know, <laughs> um Okunaba and Kataria, uh some people the statement that you just made about or made about him being involved in anti party activities. Uh, some people are saying that it's not necessarily an anti-party activity because he's actually it? not rightly voted for or done anything, you know, contrary. It's, it's a mere association, and that's what it is, which everyone has a right to. So, uh, let it, let, okay, no, 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 forget, please, 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 please. don't embellish this fact. Let's say things the way they are. Messi, you are working for Plus TV. I come to you, or oh, you got air at the start. You go ahead to say if you want your message publicly disseminated to get to the target others, go to AIT. What have you done? Or you go ahead to say, uh, for this reason, <coughs> excuse me, I endorse channel television. What have you done? What have you done? How else are you going to explain it? We are well exposed and well educated. So who is going to school? Well, what have you done? Rather than market your own plus TV, you are marketing others, endorsing others. What have you done? That is anti party. How do you describe anti party? That is anti party, plain anti party, anti party in action. There's no other way. Anti party. People are expelled from a party when they even surreptitiously play anti party. Not to talk of when you brazenly, openly, without compunction, buy to play anti party. So, what, so, what, I, so why yeah, has the party not taken action? I'm because we know disappointed that. In a, a, I'm highly disappointed in the likes of Atiku, Ayu, and Co. Hmm. I'm highly disappointed in that. They don't have that gun, so they're not giving me that cause to say, yes, they can take decisions as leaders. What is their fear? The man will never support you. The answer is going to be build the logistics. What is your fear? What is your fear? Then you're going to ahead and expel one or two other persons the other day. What did they do? What did, what did they do? This major one, this, this cancer, you are not, you've not cured the cancer in your system. You're going to treat malaria. How, how, how do you, you reason? Every blessed day you go and uh, you attack the national chairman, you castigate the national chairman, you criticize that people. What, which other, and you go to say, you can dust the legal state of you are going to give logistics to, uh, what's his name, uh, uh, Peter B. And you are a sitting governor. What have you done to the PDP that the PDP has not done? You have not even given back to the party 10% of what they did for you. So what what happens to you know the party? Every system should have a mechanism uh, to correct itself. So I, I'm sure that that's not also different from the party. That's the People's Democratic Party. If he's acting contrary you know, to the laws that uh, govern the party, then you, you, the, you are, the system should purge itself had, of such action. You. Certain persons are just recidivists. There are car you know, when a man is suffering from narcissistic personality disorder, it's a problem. You believe that you must be respected, you must be the very God. And so what you say must be done. That is the truth. And it's the most thing now, it's not the question of Labo said so now. Before they come they said, I must win. Even in church, when you said, don't uh, fire your papa or whatever you said, so got a spinach. I must win. Oh, the pastor said, if you said, no, I must win. Church a person, you cannot pacify that person. A person has a mindset, you cannot pacify that person. It's not possible. And that is the problem. Otherwise, it can be resolved. What cannot be resolved? It can be resolved. In River State, he threatens that whoever goes ahead to talk about that before uh, the PDP candidate met, the governorship candidate, to talk about the who will emerge as governor, that person will be sacked. What, what do you, how do you call that? No, in this case, they are even talking of uh, election. This one, he, he chose. And that is why you have certain persons 
in Abuja today, those inside the traitors in Abuja today. You chose. It wasn't, it wasn't really a, 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 an election. So what is good for the goods is not good for the Ghana. But in this other case, there are no shoes. It was an election. Okay. Which one you chose? And to, you are still saying, what, what, what in that, which is the integrity, what, integrity my food? How many of the governors there are paying salaries? How many of the governors there are, 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 are ruling their state to the satisfaction of, the, of, the, of their individuals? How many of them there? If you if ask my aunt, if you ask my other president, if you have your state government, and you say to the chief of staff, go to your state, seven years for it's a disgrace. Seven solid days, it's a disgrace. There was one thing moving left, right, and center. You can bet them a cheap stuff for Saturday. Moving left, right, and shame left, me moving left, because the blood protein, I mean. Okay. No, I look at the states. Well, no development in the state, whatever. In the whole seven years, it's all over. I'm not sure that the flyer of my weekend did not contribute. Let's move away from that subject. Let's move away from that. The Daily Sun newspaper talks about insecurity. And uh, very interesting is that um, the military gets an order to tame terrorists before the elections. Do, we, do you think that the military needs to get an order to act? Do, do you need that the police need to get an order before they take action, before they act according to the purpose and reason they were created for. The military doesn't need to get an order. No, 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 it, it has to get an order. Because um, uh, the modus operandi of the military is quite different from the police. They did not say the police, they did not say six, uh, civil defense, the military. So they take, there is a chain of command. It comes from the judge. For example, if something happens, the military cannot just move in, except at the behest of Mr. President, through the various channels. The military cannot just move. So that cannot just be the bias. All like people who are constitutionally vested with the powers to maintain law and order. The military is actually a standard address, uh, except uh, when invited, uh, when in case of insurrection. Nevertheless, these are just mere rhetoric. You know, if you talk of military death and order, this is not the first time military is getting an order. Guare has always given an order. Always. But one, the orders are going to be flouted or trivialized. That is the problem. And the orders are flouted or trivialized with the knowledge of Guare and with impunity. Nothing is being done. Just like the former ID. IGP, he wasn't a military member, I'm using that as an example. The same IGP that was sent to Bono that never went to Bono, but he got to Bono and left Sendu. And months after the president went, they only to be told that the IG never slept in Bono for one night. He said he was going to find out why. And that was the end of it. Look at the former service chiefs. The former service chiefs were indicted by their uh, successors including the NSA, who said all the money, they could not account for all the money released for the purchase of arms and ammunition. There was nothing to justify that allocation. What happened? They were rewarded with ambassadorial appointments in order to insulate them from the, 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 the public criticisms or prosecution or whatever. Only the president knows why. And that's why people are saying it's complicity. So the military, when it says that, it's not the first time the military is getting an order. Nigerians are no longer interested in military order. In order. Nigerians are interested in action. So what you have is high blood pressure, deceptive brethren, and an enemy of concrete performance. That is the problem. That is what Nigerians are talking about. So don't come and tell me the. But let me commend the present chief of general staff, defense staff of general staff, whatever his name is. The men are tried compared to his predecessors. The predecessors are abysmal failure, complete disgrace to the army. A, a, a chief of army staff will tell you it will take 20 years to contain insurgency in this country. Why would it take even 40 years when you stole all the whole money allocated? I didn't say it. The NSA said it. The service said it. When they said there is nothing on ground to show for the money, I'll get. 
That is an eternity. You stole the money. That's the truth. So how would it last? And if you knew that you're going to last for 20 years, then why should you tell us that you are technically, scientifically, strategically defeated? Because who are you deceiving? Who are you deceiving? So we are not interested in the other. We are interested in results, not, not other. We are sick and tired of other. Every time I give him other, other this, other that. Rubbish, absolute nonsense, flim flam. We want action. And when we get the action, you don't need to say it. We will see it with our eyes that things are working. So, but how then do we explain why the military still has to get another? You say um, it's fine that they need to get another because of the chain of command. Why so are I we involving? Have an issue. Have an issue. Why are we? Why are we involving? Why are we involving the military in civil issue? That's my question. If you say that uh, they are supposed to protect because and maintain territorial integrity, and then we have the police whose function is to maintain, you know, peace and order internally. I got your, let me put I got your answer, uh, your question. The police force has been overwhelmed. First and foremost, the, under, the police is underfunded, underfunded. There is death of personnel. When I mean death, I've got D-A-R-O-T-H of personnel and so on. So the police force has been, you know, the police started suffering under the same virus regime as a military people. Because under Shagari, yes, under Shagari, you're surprised. You are probably not born then, Mr. <laughs> under <laughs> Shagari, <laughs> under Shagari, some that they will see was the IGP. Now, Shagari bought armored vehicles and particular pieces and so on for some that well equipped the police. This same way, I felt the police was becoming a threat to the military. He came in and crippled the police force. In 1984. That was what he left. And since then, the police force has been shot. Those who were born there will tell you the story. They will attack the police force. Since then, the police force has been suffering. So the police is, how would I put it, doesn't have. Not that the men, the personnel are not there, are not, are not qualified, but you need the necessary tools to contain the situation. The police hasn't. It's just now they are talking about recruitment into the police force. So you have to bring in the army. Even the constitution permits it. That's why in cases of insurrection, you can bring in the army. There is no problem with that. The most important thing is containing the situation. That's what matters. But even the army you're bringing in is not sincere. We have had a situation where a captain was arrested. He was implicated. Those who were arrested implicated the captain. Was, what has happened? That was the end of the story. It was a well celebrated case. Every day we hear of soldiers getting involved. Just two weeks ago, some soldiers were also arrested for aiding and abetting. Now, no problem, you have bad heads. That would be the argument. But if the head is rotten, the body will be rotten. Yes, you have bad heads in the force. In the, the service chiefs, what of the monies are located? What happened to the monies? So you are not just talking about bad heads. You are talking of service chiefs that are the bad heads. I'm talking about the ones that are gone. I'm not talking about the service chiefs. The ones that are gone. These ones are trying. O open the bar. They are trying. Open the bar. So, so the question is, is it that we're oblivion of the fact that, uh, you know, the Nigerian police or the police force is overwhelmed? Is it that the Nigerian, our leaders don't understand the dynamics? Because... How do you explain the rationale that every other time you have a body that's saddled with the responsibility of ensuring protection and of lives and property in a civil dispensation? That's why they were created. And there's also a budgetary allocation every other time, you know, to the police. So um, is it that we're oblivion of the fact that they're overwhelmed? What exactly is the issue here? What are we dealing with? Talking uh, about... Um the police were, I just explained to you. It is one fault that was treated with levy. Funding, they had issues with funding. They had issues with personnel. And when you don't have the equipment to combat the terrorists, how do you go about it? It's going to be a fitting illusion 
Because these terrorists, you see this one they collect, they use to put themselves. They buy sophisticated weapons to prosecute their illegal trade. Now you have these policemen that are in a pitch and they, are, they don't have the numerical strength. So, it How is, do you think so, so my question is, is it that we're not, we're not in the know of all of the challenges of, of the police force in Nigeria? Is no, no, they have, they, no, we, no they, have, they have come out to say so. But the truth is, the hierarchy will not do so because it is anti their laws. The IDP cannot come up to criticize the president. But retired IDP have done so. Arasa said it. Arasa, Arasa said it, they need, they, they men are well trained, but they don't have the equipment to prosecute and the numerical strength to match the terrorists. Otherwise, whenever they leave this country, go on peacekeeping missions, they sell, they come back as the best. So you ask yourself the question, what is the problem with this? Incentive. You have to incentivize them. And how do you do that? If a, if a policeman dies in cause of duty, the whole system should be great. The family should not be abandoned. If he's going there, okay, there was uh, a man who went to pay ransom and came out and said, there are three stages, three steps. The first one, that I'm talking about soldiers and police. The first one will tell you, we have been ordered to collect some money, so give us X amount. It was all over the news. The second one will tell you, they did not give us they did not send us here to die without any equipment. So let me collect what I have to collect. They told, so these things are there in public domain. So even if the commitment is not there, that's the truth. Because when these money are released, they are bosses. When they the money, use the money to spend it online their pockets and send these people to go and die like rats. So at that point, you must have compromise, whether you like it or not. There has to be, there will be compromise. Because they know that the state, even if they die today, the state will not be bothered. It will not even be discussed. Only the journalists will uh, contemporize it for a day or two. And that is the end. A civilized man like America, so you see the president going to the, the house of whoever is there, whoever is, was killed. The president himself. That is not the case here. We have a situation where the team of Amistad died in the plane crash. And the next weekend they were having a wedding. The president was attending the wedding. Why would you want to kill yourself for such a country? Why? Chief of minister and the president was attending the wedding of the minister. How callous and insensitive can anybody be? People are dying here, you're traveling out of the country. So, specifically for one useless meeting that has no meeting and brought anything to this country. That is one economic benefit you have. Mm. For the last seven years that this Mr. President has been broke up, that is one economic benefit. What then the situation is getting worse. Well, uh, just before, you know, we call it a wrap on Off the Press this morning, I'd like to share your thoughts on uh, the discovery of uh, oil in Bauchi and Gombe and the fact that there might just be, uh, you know, exploration of this product. Should we still be excited? I mean, are you excited that uh, we're discovering and we probably might just be, ex uh, you know, venturing into exploration of oil in this state? Yeah, uh, well, it's okay. Uh, um, thank God for that. God bless them. <laughs> oil is still our mainstay. Our leaders have refused to diversify. So I bless the result of, uh, you like call it, Leadership, diplomacy, intellectual, and media, whatever it is, they will to diversify. So we still depend on oil. So if we found oil and it's going to add to our, uh, what's it called, um, GDP, it's going, to, it's going to also boost our reserves, our, it's okay, I have no problem with that. Let them go ahead with it. It's not a matter of uh, finding out. Whenever we have a good president, we are going to diversify. And don't forget that. Um, if I talk now, you say I'm criticizing this government so much. There is a morass of leadership back you. And so we live in a country where we minimize the maximum and maximize the minimum. That is what is going on. Otherwise, this shouldn't ordinarily be an issue. 
But we found ourselves. Let us wait till May 29. There is nothing we can do about it. Let's wait till May 29. They found out why they are saying this is that Niger Delta, just remember that you are not the only one to sustain the economy. That's why, that's why they are saying this. So in other, you push out. in other words, the world, you know, Okunabo, you're what saying that the oil, this oil well does not exist. Are you saying that there's no oil really, or is it just a statement? Have you seen it? Have you seen it? Have you seen it? No, I'm not seeing it. I'm just saying thank God they, they said they found. Yeah, have you seen it? They said they found. Thank God they found. Okay, let's wait now. Let us have exploration or not. They, are, they can also build refineries there. Look, they just want to tell us that it's not really Niger Delta. That's what they are trying to do. It's not only Niger Delta. But until you start exploring, until you start exporting, it is still Niger Delta. Because right now, that oil that you say you found in that area is not producing anything. So it's still Niger Delta. But, but what difference does it make when we're not even able to refine our, you know, crude? We still have That's to... what I'm telling you. That we, no, that's what I'm telling you. Now, they will come up with Niger Delta, uh, voucher or whatever, we'll also get... Look at the laws that come up now, the PID, the PIA. Look at it. Even if the pipe is crossing through your house, you, you, you are entitled to uh, 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 some uh, royalties and so on. That is what they do. The North is held bent and ensuring that whatever the South benefits from, it benefits from. It's as simple as that. It's as simple as that. And you see, these are the result of bad leadership. And that's why people keep talking of my zone, my zone, my zone. Because of the monopoly segregation and same discrimination that we practice in this country. That's why they're telling you about it. People are talking of forcing, people are talking of this. You are jubilated that you have oil in Bausch. Meanwhile, even your refineries are not working. They are more important. They are there. You become conduit pipes. Every day you pay salaries. Every year you pay salaries. You say you maintain, but the refineries are not working. You said you come on board and in less than how many months you're going to put a job that the refineries start working. What has happened? It's a conduit pipe. The refineries are conduit pipes. Nothing is going on. You're already going. You're already in the of the administration. So you're already living. Nothing can happen to the refineries. You don't privatize it. Look at the privatization law. The government is still practically in charge of the refinery. Who is fooling who? I bet I can't wait for May 29th. Well, uh, thank you so much, Upnabo and Kataria, for being part of uh, the breakfast this morning off the press, uh, to be precise. We thank appreciate you. your time, and we look forward to sharing more of your thoughts as we progress. Thank you. All right, then. Well, that's it. We take a break and when we return, we'll be looking at our first major conversation. Please stay with us.